Hey, what's up guys? I'm Dan H and welcome to the project. In this video, we're going to talk about the XJ radiator. Now, it's been raining out for the last week. It's pouring right now, so I can't disassemble Project Beach Jeep. But I'm going to show you how to restore this radiator and I'm going to show you how I clean up all the nuts and bolts. Alright, so here is a radiator from a 1997 to 2001 Jeep Cherokee XJ. It is upside down, but that's okay. And here are two of the four bolts that connect the electric fan and the clutch fan shroud to the radiator support bracket. I broke the other two, taking them out, so let me show you what we're going to do. Alright, before I clean the nuts and bolts, I just want to assemble a full set of bolts that attach the electric fan and the clutch fan shroud to the radiator support bracket. Um, if you saw from the previous video, I had a little trouble getting these little M5 8mm bolts out. There's not a lot of metal to grab onto, and some of them broke. So I found these extra fender clips, and I also have these other 10mm bolts that are M6 in thickness, which will be a little more beefier, and that's a good thing. So uh, these thread into here, and I'm just going to put the new clips where they go in here, but um, I'm just one short. I think I know where the last one is. I got a pile, a pile of Jeep nuts and bolts from all the Cherokees I've built in the last few years. It's, it's like sorting through Legos when I was a kid. Here we go, here's one. Oh no, the threads are stripped. So one of the greatest tools you could ever own is a thread checker set. I need to chase one of these threads, so this is gonna tell me exactly which tap and die I need to use. I measured it up, it's a M6-1. So I'm just gonna double check with one of the good threads. And that's a perfect match. So now I'm gonna go ahead and I got my I got the uh, the die here. The tap threads holds, the die chases threads. So I got my M6 by one. And I got the bad screw here, the bad bolt. Just gonna put this in my vise. Gonna use some cutting oil. And I'm going to gently chase these threads. Start off nice and slow until it starts to catch. Then you can just smoothly keep turning all the way down. There we go. Slides on there nice and easy. We got some beautifully new cut threads. All right, and here's another tool that I absolutely love. This is a brass tumbler for cleaning ammo that you reload. And I use it for cleaning nuts and bolts. So I'm going to take my bolts that I freshly cut and the fasteners. And now I'm going to throw them in. Everything here. I'm going to chuck it all in. This tumbler cleans these bolts amazingly well. You'll be surprised. Check out these rusty bolts once again. I'm going to put it in this tumbler. This is a crushed walnut medium. I'm going to let it tumble for a day or so, and you'll be amazed at how clean they get. So I'm going to plug it in, let it do its thing. All right, so I got all the nuts and bolts to the radiator in the tumbler. I'm going to hit the frame of the radiator with a wire brush so we can clean it all up and paint it. So I'm not looking for perfection here, I'm just trying to clean it up, get some paint on it so it doesn't look like a pile of rusted crap when I put it back into the Jeep.
Okay, we're going to use some Rust-Oleum Gloss Protective Enamel. This is trusted for superior coverage and lasting durability that provides ultimate rust protection. Let's give it a shot. Alright, since I'm going to touch up the radiator, I might as well clean up the radiator support bracket and header panel support bracket. Paint that too. Alright, so it's been about 24 hours, not even, since I've had all these radiator bolts tumbling. These are nice and clean. This is the 10 millimeter that I chased. This was in here for less than a day. Imagine what it would look like if you put it in for two or three days. Okay, I punched all the bolts into a piece of cardboard so I could paint them nice and easily. Okay, so it's a little later in the day. We got the radiator painted, we got the radiator support bracket painted, we got the header panel bracket painted, we got all the nuts and bolts painted. They're out there drying now, the sun came out. So I'm out here with the AC condenser. What I want to do is I want to see if one of these AC condenser doesn't leak. So I got this baby pool hooked up. Hopefully one of them will be good. And then when everything's dried, we could assemble the whole thing together as a unit again, and we're going to store it away. So I'm going to start with the AC condenser that I pretty sure has a hole in it, and we'll see if we can get some air coming out. Here's the one with the hole in it, or it might have a hole in it. Looks like I took a shot. So we'll see if we can get some air bubbles coming out of it. So I'm gonna fully submerge it in this baby pool. I got a cork to cork the female end. And I got a little adapter I made from uh, some tubing and some other parts. And I'm going to hook up to my airline. See if it bubbles. Oh wow, alright, so this actually holds air, so I'm going to test the next one. Alright, same thing, fully submerge it, cork the female end, and I'm going to put air in the male end. Wow, no air leaks. Okay, this is fantastic news. I got two AC condensers that hold pressure. So when everything is dried, I'm going to assemble them all as one unit and store the whole thing away.
All right, the last thing I'm gonna do before I assemble everything back together is I'm gonna flip this sheet of cardboard that I have all the screws and bolts in, and I'm just gonna hit it all again with another coat of WD-40 so nothing seizes up. All right, here is the dry radiator, all nice and painted. Here's the AC condenser, dry, nice and painted. Radiator support bracket, header panel support bracket and all the nuts and bolts. So I'm going to go ahead and assemble this all together back as one unit. Alright, first I'm going to install the clips on the radiator support bracket. Now the header panel support bracket goes right on top. And we use the T30 Torx. I'm not snugging anything down. I'm just getting them on semi-firm so I don't lose them. Okay, the next thing that's going on are the clips that hold the fan shrouds. Size six. And the hood catch. I'm going to move this to the side and we'll assemble the radiator and the condenser. We're going to tighten up the radiator frame with the 10 millimeter bolts. Radiator bushings. And these get the tiny 8 millimeter. Nice catch. Here are those fasteners that I was missing from Beach Jeep. I had to take them off the parts car. Now the ground lights and bushings go on. And we can take one. Tape them on so I don't lose them. Now I'm going to attach the radiator to the radiator support bracket. And it's 10 millimeter, and I'm just going to snug it on. Almost forgot the brass fittings for the trans cooler. Now the parts I still have yet to assemble are the quick disconnects for the AC evaporator. These uh, little locks, keep them in a jar along with the battery tie down and the six painted bolts that we're going to use to attach the radiator support back onto the Cherokee. So this is Alright guys. We have a cleaned and painted radiator, condenser, radiator support bracket, and header panel bracket. We also have clean and painted hardware. So this thing is good to go. I'm so glad we checked it for leaks. We got a leak-free radiator and a leak-free condenser. 
So this thing is going to go away until that time when we install it. And thank you guys for watching. Uh, give me a like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next project.